Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when that happens? No, it's happening now. She won't tell you what the heck is going on with her. And she's not giving Hugo them papers and shit. Don't let us eat up your time, James. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. All right, so let's talk to Robert and Brian. Oh, boy. I glanced across the yard and noticed Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Okay, I didn't think they would be chatting together. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian right now. But I guess I could live with learning more about Robert. Oh, no, they caught me staring. Oh, no, Brian's waving me over. <laughs> Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. <laughs> James. How the heck are you? Suddenly in the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. Hey. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Whoa. James, have you ever met Rob? Have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. <laughs> We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Oh, that's cool. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside, making art. She won a local competition for that art. Yep. <laughs> Did I put it on too strongly? Yeah, you kind of did. Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Yeah, I see you look at me. Anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have... Ki Wait, what happened the last time? Oh. Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy is a strong kid. Uh, met... I'm in my army days. Um, comes from Kansas. They build them tougher out there. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think they have this written. Like, kind of, like, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, how do I describe them? Like, I don't know. Kind of like a Western short answers kind of stuff. I, I'm just, I say a Western because I've been playing Red Dead too. Okay, well, old Jenna Boy and me here, we're out in the back country. Johnny Boy is a strong kid. Met, um, met him in, um, in my army days. Come from Kansas. They build them tougher out there. Anyways, things got south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the rope uh, bridge snaps. Ugh. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able, um, I'm able to dress the wound, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you, there were moments during these two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy, but you build a bond with your brother in arm, and that bond never breaks. I got that boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that com that's camping for ya. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went in there tubing down a river and he lost the flip-flop. Missed that kid. Whoa. Brian and I laugh nervously. <sighs> or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. I... I'm kidding. <laughs> Phew. Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us laughing. Daisy is holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But the trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Oh. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. Eh? The, Im um, the imaginary yeah. truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? Well, oh, I'm prepared to do anything to survive. Eh. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert? Uh. Wait a second, are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. 
Amanda and I love that show. It's the best, especially the episode where um, Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient curse urn and sending the spirit after him. Yeah, it's such a quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. Yeah. All right, Daisy, I found there's a couple of bugs. They're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein, gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Huh. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. <laughs> Let's go find a kindly for fire. Okay, but not an actual fire because we're playing pretend. Yes. Now you're getting it. All right, girl, don't take stuff too literal. Take a swig of more water. Gee. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute, uh, cute couple of kids. <laughs> Man, I never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has a way with kids. Uh. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that it's nice that he's not trying to one up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Mm hmm. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Or she's being bullied. There it is. I mean, I think she's being bullied. I could be wrong. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a habit of crawling on the tables and crying every time he took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Oh, ho, ho. the kids, right? Gotta love them. Um, you're required to by law. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Oh! A little play date! They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually hearing about all of Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that, that, that'd that be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. All right, now the last two, Vampire, Adada, and, and I don't remember the other guy. I got, oh wait, I spot Joseph chanting with the guy from Death, Goth, and Beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious, can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Huh. Where do I even start? Uh, the house stays warmer in the winter, it provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Oh, yeah. It's definitely an interesting choice. Oh, thank you. I'm very proud of Maya Bold. Okay, I'm not sure about the vampire dude. I mean, I love... My favorite color is black, and I'm not complaining that he painted the house black. I'm cool with that. But uh, what stuff in common do we have? James, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about his aesthetic design decision. Damien regards uh, regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I uh, must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously. And to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Death, Goth, and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Damn. I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no such way for a gentleman to act. It's, uh, it's okay, man. Uh. Don't tell, uh, do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Death, Goth, and Beyond. Oh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. What? Hey, Amanda, would you consider yourself goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee, twee hipster with some 
Norm core le uh, leanings. What the heck? Bets are cool, though. Hmm. Ah, pity. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Oh. True. Amanda walks up to the conversation. I also like the Lost Boys a lot. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Really good movie. Does that count as goth? No, it doesn't. It does not count as goth. But um, the Lost Boys. If you haven't, if you haven't watched that vampire movie, go watch it now. It's an awesome movie. It's, it's like my favorite number one vampire movie. Oh. That it will be, my dear. I don't believe we had the pleasure of meeting Damien Blood March at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Okay, very dramatic. Amanda blushes and returns to Jester with a curtsy. My, do you know how to treat it? Uh, uh, do you know how to treat a lady? Hello, Amanda. Oh my gosh, here comes the twins. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph twins' kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Uh, hey. Won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, Come play with us forever. <sighs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We talked about this. Christian and Christy slowly backs away. Where do you think they got that from? <sighs> Mary pops in the conversation, wine in hand. Okay, why... Uh, this lady... Okay. She, oh. I uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. <clears throat> I think I might have taped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Uh-huh. She takes another sip of her wine. Oh. Where's Krish? Uh. Wasn't he with you? Yeah. You had him a moment ago. <sighs> He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass off to me. Mm -hmm. ah. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. I have squeezed four oh. little sweetheart. Would you do me a favor and please find Krish? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. Oh. Mary. Ah. Okay, geez. Mary finishes a wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Hmm. Uh, Lucian, have I introduced you to James yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave us the freaking wrong... Bitch. Okay, I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christensen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Uh. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in Victorian era were uh, vegetarians? They describe carnivorous type people as blood lappers. But she dressed as a vampire. Hey. Okay, that, that's really interesting, Damon. Joseph turns to the grill just to hand up tattoo peek out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Who it? Whoa, is that a tattoo? Oh. Yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. Uh, that's so cool. Want to see mine? What? What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelet, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Yeah, I see it. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Oh my gosh. That shit should be infected. Lucian, we'll talk about this later. Uh. That's pretty cool. That's the significance of the tattoo. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought I looked sick. Huh? Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figure youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. Oh. I don't know, but there's something about him that I don't like. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. Easily some of the best grill work I've ever oh. seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing 
uh, cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onto onions on the side. One after another, dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, James, but Joseph known around here for his grillmanship. Ah. He's ungrill ungrillable. Bro. Oh my gosh. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Okay, all these dad jokes. Come on. Come on. Hey. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Uh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can we just appreciate the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Hey. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Oh my gosh, please stop. <laughs> Although the children at the party boo the glorious displays of puns in unison. That was puns upon puns <laughs> upon pun. Jeez. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburger. Oh. Nice. Uh, man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Uh, he keeps saying it's weird, so I wonder, what is going on? Is there something more to this game that I don't know about? Mm -hmm. Um, kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. Um, I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. <laughs> hey, why don't you add us all on the dad book? Dad book? <laughs> Yeah, it's a great social network for dad to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it. Uh, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Oh, hell no. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like I was at a networking event. Wish I could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Truckers. No, I'll put I felt like I was at a networking event. I'm gonna get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know it. Mm. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Mm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on your on dad book. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. Uh, I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. All right. I'm not even going to oh. try to see read the bottom part of the transitioning page. <laughs> Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, mm -hmm. is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Mm -hmm. You got it. And be careful. Yeah. I will. Make good choices. Hmm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Huh. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, i never done that. And I would never do hmm. that. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I hope he does that, though. Um, okay, do you have any plans tonight? I, um... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda. But I'll find something to do. I mean, you can watch ice cream. You just saw what happened. You can watch TV and eat ice cream at the same time. Jeez. Sorry. I'm gonna work on some stuff. See how long I can sleep for it. Throw a party. Work on some stuff, I say. You know, that stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off in the night into the night. I really do hope she has fun. 
I plot down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin, Gavin <laughs> Chapman. Looks like Gavin is making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'm laughing at Gavin because there's, in Red Dead Redemption 2, there's a character named, um, well, there's a guy that's always looking for Gavin. And he's like, Gavin, where are you? Gavin. You know, so that's why I, I laughed at the name Gavin. Okay, I love to be able to cook like that. Although I think I was actually good at cooking. I used my powers for evil, like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire. But he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several... several episodes of wine and dine mastermind mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called meat hell i'm not even sure what that one was about it was just a lot of yelling i glance at my watch man it's almost midnight i should check in with amanda i sent a text hey kiddo you good oh now we're on to the kitchen look how the kitchen looks nice and simple mm-hmm mm-hmm <clears throat> I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she responds soon, unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon because definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it. After a long day of socializing, I check my watch again, and then my phone, nothing yet. No, wait. I check my uh, I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, I see now. I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no, no. It's too soon for that. I'll send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman Meet Hell are not only not um, assaging my anxiety. Um damn i never heard of that word before but uh, possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling so i keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back why didn't i find out where she was going who was she even with why don't i know any of her friends phone numbers why don't i even know any of her friends full names exactly who is emma p i decided to send her another text amanda please text me and let me know you're okay i can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her Okay, thank you. Thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're Ugh. safe. Ugh, yup. What you mean up yet? But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Oh, hell no. Amanda Ann. Whoa, whoa. We're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew, and you didn't even respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. It is a, I was about to call the cops. Mm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I don't like your attitude. I have a right to be concerned. I was scared. All right, this dad is being too nice. James Dean. You need to put your mother effing foot down and be like, listen, when you're out, your phone better be freaking on vibrate and pick that shit up. Like, you're not, no, 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 you're not going to go out. No, no. Um, I don't like your, yeah, I don't like it. You can't talk to me like that. Are you serious? Stop treating me like a child. Then stop acting like one. I told you to check in with me and you didn't. How am I supposed to trust you to make good choices when you move out if you can't even check in with me? I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired of all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Oh. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. Yeah, like, dude, get mad at her. <laughs> you know, Amanda closes the door on to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace uh. offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, uh. I thought about what you said last night. Mm. 
I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I don't want to do it again. Well, I'm sorry for freaking... No! I trust, uh, I trust you to make good... Yeah, I'll say I'll trust you, but I'm not going to say sorry. He, he had every right to freak out. What the fudge? I also thought about it, and I'll try to give you your space from here on out. I got to trust that you can take care of yourself. Huh? Team Dean? Team Dean. Huh. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on him. Already did. <laughs> Bless you. Amanda scarfed down the eggs in time it takes... Oh, no. In time it takes me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Hmm. What? What's that book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Hmm. What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Damn. Listen. I know you're a dad, and it looks like you're a young dad, so you should know in general what a social media platform is. Okay? Like, dude is seriously... And I'm gonna get a little bit New York on you. He is dead ass living under a freaking rock. What the hell? Okay, dad, I got to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Hmm. Don't use that excuse. All right, I'll help you s <laughs> sound interesting on the internet. Okay, that I... Uh, that, uh, that, okay, okay. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on Dad Book, which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Dad. All right, Pops, we got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. <gasps> Ooh. I get to fill out a freaking Dad Book. Okay, I am excited about this. I'm, I am a little bit excited. Okay, on a Friday night, you are most likely to... <laughs> Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Polish, look at, oh, <laughs> let me get a swig of water. Polish and sort my coin collection. Mm-hmm. Netflix and grill, baby. <laughs> I, I, I like that, I like that. Fall asleep watching the History Channel. Torment my children with dad puns. Sink into blissful oblivion. Hmm. All right, so freaking James Dean, he likes to fall asleep a lot, and he does watch the History Channel, but I like the Netflix and Grill Baby thing. That one is more funny. Damn. Okay, I'm. I'm. I'm I don't know. I don't know. Sink into on a Friday night. Netflix and grill, polish, and sort my coin. No, fall asleep and watch the History Channel on a Friday night. Damn. And he's more of a sleeping in kind of guy. Alrighty. Well, this determined the type of person. Okay, let me just make the decision. Okay, sink into blissful oblivion. All right, if you had one thing to take with you on onto a desert island, what would it be? Uh, my trusty grill. What is it with the grill? The lost shaker of the lost <laughs> shaker of salt. Cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. Uh, I'll say a boat. What are your turn ons? <laughs> wow. Strong dead arms, tennis shoes with long white socks. Oh my god, a well manicured lawn, street smarts, top tier grillmanship, comfortable. Cry I'm gonna say street smarts. What did you want to be when you grew up? All right, so a technical writer for manuals and instructionals, salty boat captain, pro skater who is also an astronaut, a good father. The president of space. Oh. The president of space. That sounds pretty cool. Technical writer for manuals and instructionals. I mean, I don't know. James Dean, he used to be a freaking... Um, I'm going to say a pro skater who is also an astronaut. Okay, what's your favorite movie genre? 
war documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. <laughs> okay. Oh, damn. What's your favorite movie genre? This is tough. Um, Anything on Laserdisc? Let me put that. What's your ideal date? Oh, wow. Napping together? No, doing a 1,000 piece puzzle together. That sounds nice. Eating healthy dinner at 4 p.m.? No, trying to geocache, but getting hopelessly lost. Arson? Being emotionally vulnerable. I'll do this. What do you never leave home without? Mm, what do you never leave home? A sensible cardigan. My sick vape? Oh my gosh, no. My book of word jumbles and a pen. A cool knife. My crippling low self-esteem. I frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes. Oh, uh, this is so... Am I cri uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about... Is this me shaping my character? That's what I want to know. Or who I'm going to like mesh with more. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. Know how proud I am of my child. Potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. When I can next when I can next get a cup of coffee. What? The coffee thing. I think that's funny. Profile complete. Yay. See? That wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, one more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, dad. Go get him. Welcome. Go get him. You got dads. This is cute. I like her picture. She has a little mustache and a thing. Hi, James. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day. Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service. So you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Oh, Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why, James, I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? I thought I am, of course, flatter you should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get any, to get my degree. Wait, no. Oh, wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that? This is gold. Dude, it's on text. It's recorded on text. Uh, I was a great student. I swear, I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? Oh, I declined to comment. Cool. All right, conversation ended. Nice. So I can message? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's look at Craig, because Craig is our buddy. Let's see what he got. Oh, and then the little hearts. All right, all right, all right. So let's see what he said. Dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast, juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig. But someone's got to do it. On a Friday night, you are most likely to get one last good cardio session in. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars, of course. What are your turn-ons? A sub six minutes mile, uh, mile. What did you want to be when you grew up? Beer pong world champion, yes. What's your favorite movie genre? Body, buddy cop movies forever. What's your ideal date? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun, oh boy. What do you ever leave home without? An extra tube of energy gel. I spend a lot of time thinking about my smile, my mild time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Let's send a message to him. Uh, 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 um. Always try your best at everything, of, of course. So are these just regular dad tips? I wonder what Craig is up to today. I navigate 
um, to Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Oh, wow. That went fast. Hey, bro, or should I say neighbor? Let's catch up like old times. A couple of moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That's quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang soon. Might be a little bit different from our old weekend long benders, but it still be fun. Oh, but oops, I forgot to read the previous stuff. We exchange a couple of more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. Oh, I should see if Amanda wants to join me. 